before I settle in on what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm contemplating a lot of different things. Oh, there's that book that I've always wanted to turn into a movie. Maybe I'd start reading that again and go over my old notes. Uh, I, I explore some different ideas, of, you know, see what stage in the incubator <laughs> that they are at, at any given time, especially when I'm looking for inspiration. You know, it's almost a, a metaphor for falling in love. You date a lot of people and you flirt with a lot of people and everything's going great. Um, but then you meet the right one. And once, you, once, once I realize that, oh, okay, uh, this has grabbed me. And, oh, this, this is genuinely legit. And now I, maybe I'm thinking about music choices for it and trying to find different music choices for it and web spinning about it. And maybe it gets me to actually start writing a little bit. And pretty shortly into that process, I'll probably end up writing something that's like, okay, I'm doing this now. This is, this is now what I'm doing. It's not really, I, it doesn't do me much good to think too much past the middle. I mean, I might know where I want to go. I mean, it, you know, I write genre pieces, so you have an idea what the third act's going to be, uh, you know, and Kill Bill. I guess she'll probably kill Bill at the end. <laughs> uh, you, know, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, she's got a list. She's going to work down the list, all right? So the big choice is, well, who's who on the list? All right, um... Uh, but, you know, a genre movie, you think you know where you're going, and you're probably right, and you have an idea of how you might want the ending to end as for, you know, for both a movie and for an audience. But for the most part, you can kind of work out more or less what's going to get you to the middle. But to think beyond that is kind of silly, because um, by the time you get to the middle when you've actually been writing it, well... It's a different story now. It's a different thing now. Now, now, you are the characters. You know the characters. Things that you could never have known before you started yeah. writing are now they're in your blood. It's like this entire myth- you know there is a mythology to my movies to some degree or another. And that mythology is delivered as as I write, and I might have a, a checklist of things that I might want to do during the course of the time, but some of them you know are, you know uh, become irrelevant. Yeah. As you go on, and when other ones take their place, and some things that you thought could have been a big deal, well, they are a big deal. And some things you, about maybe half the reason you wanted to write it, by the time you get to where that would happen, eh, it's for something else. It's not for this. Um, but by the time you get to the middle, that's where you want to be. You want to have the, be this expert. You want to be in the middle of the story. You want to know who these people are. And now, with all this knowledge, now you figure out where you want to go for the second half. But I am trusting that. I will know exactly what to do when I get there from having done the work one way or the other, you know, and, uh, but it's that trust. You have to trust, you have to trust, you know, that it's going to be there when you reach out. I remember I was watching I was watching a movie once that I thought was uh, the director did, did a talented job with it. Having said that, he dealt with what he needed to deal with, but I know that there was a lot of questions he didn't ask. And I and I knew that when you create a mythology, stuff forget about it. Stuff that uh, that never will make it to the movie. You need to know everything. But in the case of me, like I said, if you're creating a mythology, you got to know all the rules of that. It has, doesn't matter what the audience knows. They got to know you know. When I'm writing, it's about the page. It's not about the movie. It's not about cinema or anything. It's about the literature of me putting my pen to paper and and writing a good page and making it work completely as uh, a a literature uh, uh, document on itself. That's my first artistic contribution. And if I do my job right, by the end of the script, I, I should be having the thought, you know, if I were to just publish this now and not make it, I'm done. I've done it. I could actually be okay with just saying that that's it. Now it's mine to F up if I go forward with it. Now, I always go forward with it, but I actually think you, sh- I, for where I'm coming from, I want to love that script so much that I, I'm tempted to stop. I'm tempted to call myself a winner right then and there. So the point being of that is, there's stuff that's in the script that I know will never ever make the movie, but it just makes the, 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 the book, the, the piece of literature better. It's, it's a better read, it's a better, it, it, it's more emotionally satisfying. I'm telling a story. We don't tell a story. We tell a situation. Most of the movies that you see nowadays, and I'm not a Hollywood basher because enough good movies come out of the Hollywood system every year to justify its existence. You know, but they, without any apologies. However, a good majority of movies that come out, all right, you pretty much know everything you're going to see in the movie by the first 10 or 20 minutes. Now, that's not a story. 
A story is something that constantly unfolds. I'm not talking about like this quick left turn or a quick right turn or a big surprise. I'm talking about it unfolds. I like the way you die, boy. It's writing. That's what writers do. Exactly. I, yeah. I, I've never understood the concept of a, um, a screenplay just being a blueprint for the movie. I do write them like novels. I mean, I, they're not, it's not crazy prose, uh, you know, that goes on forever, but there is a commitment to the prose. And um, there is a literary narrator talking to the audience who is reading it. And these scripts are meant to be read to such a degree that basically I've written a movie that really can't be done. Uh, it's not. It's so not a blueprint. It is so a novel, and with with the except with the exception of the dialogue broken down the, the way and it is in a screenplay format, that I am stuck on set every day adapting my novel into a movie every day, and like big sequences, I know will never. I'm never gonna film that. I'm the, you know, but I don't know exactly which ones they're gonna be until I get there, and then we cut them out of the pro, cut them out of the film because well, the movie will be too long, it'll be too much money to shoot that sequence. But in the reading of the script, they were important. After a certain point, it's the characters that are going through the story, and they're telling me what's going on. Even in the case of, like, say, the Hateful Eight, without giving too much away, there is a aspect of um, there's a case of a poisoned pot of coffee. I didn't know who poisoned the coffee for a long, long time. I didn't want to know. I didn't do the mystery thing where you solve it all and then write backwards. But not only that, even in the case of The Hateful Eight, as opposed to normally, since no one of the other characters can trust anything that the other characters are saying. They are simply, they say who they are and you have to take them as, uh, uh, as that or not. I didn't want to know any more than the other characters did about the characters. So, uh, you know, when Chris Mannix shows up and says he's the sheriff, is he? Is he not? Well, I, I don't know yet. I'm not sure. I'm just only, I only know what John Ruth knows about him. Right. I only know what Major Warren knows about him. And all the way down the line, even when it came to going, arriving at Minnie's Haberdashery and there's four, and there's four other people there, I didn't know who those four other people were per se. I let them reveal themselves to me. By the time we did the movie, I had to know who all those characters really were and where they came from in order for me to talk to the actors about it. But in the first draft, I didn't want to know any more than a viewer or one of the other characters would know. Most of these people that talk about writing for screenplays, if they were teaching acting, they would be thrown out and ridiculed. They all seem to be result-oriented. And... Real actors aren't result-oriented. But real writers aren't result-oriented. I mean, the actor wants everything they do to be magnificent, and the writer wants everything they do to be magnificent. But novelists aren't result-oriented. It's the doing of it. It's the process. It's the getting there. It's, it's the journey. It's, 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 the journey is everything. The journey makes the destination worthwhile. You can only have a worthwhile destination after you've had a worthwhile journey. And novelists trust that. Actors trust that. They trust that if they live the part and they are honest, and they don't try to predetermine too much that the ultimate, the ultimate end result will be rewarding. And it seems like people who teach screenwriting go in the opposite direction. If you're judging it by a coloring book and you're getting A's for keeping your colors inside of the lines, then maybe they are right. But I, that's not how I want to judge it. Something you bitch? I think this just might be my masterpiece.